further ado, may I take the opportunity of introducing the CEO of Object, David Wright. Thank you, David. Over to you. The uh, 3D printing industry is existing for a long time. I think the first printer came to life about 27 or 28 years ago. And most of the printers that were sold were sold to customers from this space. 3D mechanical CAD designers. And basically, the industry until recently fulfilled the need of 5 million 3D CAD seats to print. One of the trends that we see which is very strong in the last few years is a very fast conversion from 2D CAD to 3D CAD. About 1 million seats a year are converting from 2D seats to 3D seats. As the technology is becoming more accessible, more easy to use, there's, there is and will, we expect, a greater demand for output for those 3D CAD uh, software, which will generate hopefully a lot of printer sales and consumable sales. There were 42,000 printers sold since day one, which is about 30 years ago. And I expect that not all of them are in operation, but uh, probably 30,000 are in operation today. But the main trend is not the history, but what's going forward. And, and what you can see on this slide, there are a lot of new sources which are um, emerging in the last few years as a source for 3D content. The introduction or the beginning of introduction of 3D oral scanners uh, created a lot of accessible 3D content in the dental industry. Uh, Object, for example, started operating uh, in the dental industry about two years ago, one and a half years ago. And even in such a short period of time, it became a significant part of our business. We have more than a few customers around the world and the more, than, more than a few resellers around the world that are finding it very interesting to sell a combination of CT scanner, a CT medical scanner, with a printer. For various applications in the medical space, a lot of them to do with operation planning. There are at least three or four areas in the medical space, like uh, liver surgery, spinal surgery, ENT surgery, which is a strong belief today that 3D printing will enable faster uh, and more efficient operation planning and hopefully better results of operations. And I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of websites today which are offering free, simple 3D uh, software on the web, which are looking for places to print. And all of them together, increasing the 3D content availability and as a result of it, the demand and also supply of 3D print. Another important trend is the fact that 3D printing is becoming more and more recognized by governments and large public organizations as the source for bringing back home manufacturing. Mr. Obama, if you look on his website, you will see that Obama initiated an activity which is, uh, he allocated 60, I think the number already is today, is 100 million dollars towards research uh, in 3D printing area and uh, in DDM, direct digital manufacturing. A similar phenomenon you see in, in Europe, this is an example from the UK, there's a similar a European fund today, uh, which is funding 3D research, 3D printing research, and 3D printing innovation in Europe. And the idea is that both US and Europe believe that uh, Europe uh, lost 3 million jobs in the last few years to Asia, uh, and the numbers in the US are similar. Everybody believes that 3D system is one of the pillars for bringing back manufacturing. There's a lot of uh, uh, excited about it, and also, again, as I said, the governments are uh, pouring money into it, which I believe will accelerate the development of our industry. Product quality and time to market in some uh, parts of the, of the especially high-tech industry, but not only high-tech, is becoming even more and more significant. And this is just one example from Microsoft. I have a quote here from the guy who was the head of design uh, in Microsoft. And when it was discussed with this uh, head of design of this really fantastic tablet, he said that there were 300 prototypes printed along the uh, manufacturing process. 3D printing, rapid prototyping, direct digital manufacturing is becoming a fundamental part of the regular design process in many industries. And as people are adopting it, the guys which are not adopting it, they are finding themselves in a disadvantage which again accelerating the growth of the industry. And again, 300 prototypes to get to this very nice new uh, tablet. The growth is accelerating and the uh, and number of units which are being sold is, is growing uh, quarter by quarter and we see it in objects and today I can also say that I see it in strategies. Terry Wallace in his 2012 uh, research uh, forecast that in 2019 the industry will uh, have total revenue of 
above six billion dollars, which is three times or almost three and a half times uh, the size of the industries this year. Another trend is a, is a fantastic growth, and, and you see it all over the place. Other trends, uh, which I just want to mention, is new entries. In the last 36 months, there were about 20 to 25 new entries to our industries with different technologies to solve different problems. It could be companies which are dedicated to, to dental, to medical, to plastic printing, to metal printing, about 25 to 30 entries. In parallel to it is another phenomena which is, consoli is consolidation, because the market becomes more and more competitive and small companies on a standalone basis find it more difficult to compete. And another phenomena that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, which I see just in the last maybe 12 or 18 months, is the uh, phenomena that suddenly new companies and also um, not only new companies are being backed for the first time in a strong way by the VC community. Which means that some other guys um, look at the industry, believe that there's a potential, a great potential for growth here, and are willing to put a lot of money into it. I think you're all familiar with the role of uh, 3D printing. Uh, we are one of the best in rapid prototyping, and we do have, with English technology, a few opportunities in rapid manufacturing. We're not a typical rapid manufacturing company. In certain areas, uh, we can be very effective in uh, uh, making manufacturing faster, more accurate, and more efficient. We are one of the fastest growing companies in our industry. Uh, we have thousands of customers today worldwide. A lot of global brands are using our equipment. Uh, we are private. A uh, company is uh, one of the youngest uh, out of the bigger companies in our industry. Uh, Object was founded in 1998. Uh, Object is unique uh, by the fact that we have, uh, I think, probably the largest uh, global reach uh, in the industry. Uh, we are local in in the US, in Europe, in Hong Kong, in China. Uh, we just got into a very interesting joint venture in Japan. So we have now 35 employees working for us in Japan, which is unique for our industry. We have over 500 employees, 110 patents and patent pending, uh, 13 awards in the last 10 years for uh, innovation and technology. We sell 10 printers and over 100 materials and composite materials. And as you all know, uh, it's one of the fantastic things about the industry that we sell to anyone which is doing any design anywhere in the world. So we are covering a lot of industries and a lot of very interesting companies. I think that in object case, um, maybe the high level advantage is technology. And when I say technology, I talk about inkjet. There is a reason why most of you have an inkjet printer at home. And the reason is that inkjet is one of the technologies that um, a lot of very big companies in the world invest many billion of dollars every year to develop. The, we have the luxury to ride on this huge investment and own the intellectual property to implement it in 3D space. As a result, we are using inkjet. You know, you should expect object printers in the future to become faster, more accurate, smaller drop size, finer uh, uh, detail. Just because the inkjet industry is progressing in a rapid pace. Just to give you an idea of how fast this industry is progressing, we could have built today the Conus 500 with one fourth of the number of heads that you see in the machine today and achieve higher accuracy and faster speed just because of the advance in inkjet technology. So if you look a few years into the future, what you're going to see out of object is printers which are substantially faster, substantially feature, uh, uh, cheaper, and will sustain all the features that you see today in object printers. So if you look on our roadmap going forward, again, it's going to be faster, smaller, less expensive, multi-material, and better material. In this Euro mold, uh, we're basically uh, launching a new printer which is called the Object 1000. It's our largest printer to date. What I think is uh, nice about this printer and what's basically what we are offering here is first of all a very wide format and is a, there is a demand in our industry for it to produce large parts, uh, true to life parts. We keep the precision that Object has on its small machines. We keep the Connex capabilities so this printer can produce over 100 materials. This printer can use abs like material. Specifically for the Object 1000, we are enhancing the total cost of, cost of ownership in a way that we will make it more efficient and more, uh, let's say, profitable for customers to print very, very large parts. Two other printers that were launched this year, the Object 30 Pro, the Object Scholar, 
And this year, Object also introduced additional 20, right? 20 materials, combination of materials, which are covering more color shades combination, opaque and transparent materials, rigid and rubber, and our standard and ABS materials. The Object has today, I think, above 125 materials, and we're adding more and more materials every day for our designers around the world. Thank you very much. It's all too